Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our presentation today. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed Build so far, and we really appreciate you taking the time on your last day to come out and listen to us talk a little bit about uh, Microsoft Fluent and how it uh, is being used inside the Microsoft Office team. Um, we're going to spend the next 20 minutes describing a little bit about how Fluent has influenced Office and how Office has influenced Fluent. And we're also going to give a few examples of how this conti continued collaboration is going to make the Microsoft design language and universal Windows platform better going forward for everyone, including all of you. Uh, to introduce ourselves, my name is Chris. I'm a PM on the Microsoft Outlook team, and I work on the Windows 10 mail and calendar apps. And I'm William Devereaux. I'm a product manager for OneNote. Cool. <laughs> so a lot of people have asked us how the Fluent design system is being used inside of Microsoft. Uh, and in Office's case, this partnering has been happening from the very beginning between the Fluent and Office design and engineering teams. Uh, we've helped evolve Fluent from its inception. We know that Office is, a, in, is an integral part of many users' workflows and a necessity in helping them stay productive. Uh, Fluent being an adaptive and empathetic language that allows your app UI to translate beautifully across Windows 10 devices helps our users remain productive. It's a natural fit that the Windows and Office teams partner on this language. Windows has decades of experience working with developers. Office has decades of experience increasing productivity. It was natural that our teams come together and combine these strengths. William and I are going to focus today on the Windows 10 Mail, Calendar, and OneNote UWP apps. We'll elaborate more as we go on, and you can ask some questions to us at the end. Uh, but it's important to note that some core features of the Fluent design system arose from office teams working with Fluent designers and engineers, and we're going to continue that process of collaboration going forward. So this partnership is critical to Microsoft empowering our users to do more. The Windows 10 Mail, Calendar, and OneNote apps, after all, are productivity apps, and they have a ton of functionality baked into them, and they are explicitly designed to make our users more productive. Paired with the Fluent Design Language, these apps were able to, do, to evolve their designs in ways that beautifully adapted to their users' needs. And that's because Fluent is, isn't just about how things look. It's a collection of principles that are designed to help users interact with our experiences. Office is engaged in Fluent because it'll help with usage consistency for our customers, even across platforms. The aesthetics might change over time, but the design patterns and principles that help empower our users are timeless. Design paradigms like elevation, color, hierarchy, and motion, which you've probably already heard about at this conference, are key parts of the Fluent toolset. And with Fluent Design, we were able to evolve the Windows 10 Mail app from this, and this is a mock-up of the app or a screenshot of the app before we actually integrated Fluent Design, to this. Just by adhering to some of the core principles of the Fluent Design system, we were able to make the app more productive and beautiful. And I'll dig into a couple of the examples that we did there. So acrylic treatment on the left pane gives both color and hierarchy without reducing readability for our users. We also used reveal effects to highlight individual actionable areas and controls while also reducing clutter and any unnecessary borders and lines, just allowing the user's content to come to the fore. We also added color persona circles to the message list. You've seen these in some of the other Outlook endpoints as well that make it easier for users to scan the list and enhance readability. We also used clean lines and were able to remove some of the associated noisy UI around the search box, allowing that UI to be much more emphasized while still allowing us to clearly delineate the three functional areas of the app. The folders and accounts pane on the left, the message list in the middle, and the reading pane on the right. In addition to adopting elements of Fluent, Office is taking decades of research and design innovation and bringing it to the Fluent design system to help our users stay focused and do more, creating the most productive experiences on Windows. The next wave of Fluent will support increased UI density, expanding the amount of information users can see on screen, reducing scrolling, and helping users get to their content faster. 
We're also bringing on-object commanding, gesture actions, and floating mini toolbars to all developers, giving users easy access to the commands they need in the context of what they're doing. And it's easier than ever to make your apps more inclusive with rich accessibility support right out of the box just by using Fluent controls. Let's dive into these in a little more detail. I'm sure you've seen some of this already. When we first released the OneNote and Mail apps on Windows 10, we heard a lot of feedback about the density of the UI. Users complained that the large touch targets made the apps feel toy-like and hard to use, and there was a lot of white space, and they couldn't see as much of the content as they would like. So about a year ago, in response to this feedback, we prototyped a new level of density in OneNote. As you can see here, you can see where we went from, we took the, uh, the navigation and the ribbon and decreased everything by about 22 to 33%, reducing font sizes, decreasing margins and padding, et cetera. And this, this change dramatically improved both the perception of the app and actual user productivity. Um, you know, the, the smaller ribbon and navigation feels much more professional, and with 33% more content, more pages on screen, users can get access to more of their information at a glance and have to scroll less frequently. We've taken these learnings and brought them back to the platform. In the next wave of Fluent, any developer can easily increase the, product, the density of your apps and make them more productive, including the mail app. So as William mentioned, uh, we had gotten some feedback with the Windows 10 Mail app that users wanted to see more of their information on their screen, uh, that the Mail app was not using space efficiently, that were, there was too much white space, there was too much space between the individual controls. Uh, and the Windows 10 Mail app is designed to be a productivity app, like I said, and it has Outlook's DNA at its core. So as a team, we decided to dig a little bit more into the feedback, get into a little bit more specific of what might be going on. Uh, and we actually saw that a lot of our users were using lower resolution screens. Uh, some of those users might actually, instead of seeing a mail app that looks like this, which is a 1080p mock-up uh, of uh, the mail app at 100% DPI, they might be seeing something a little bit more like this. And for an app that curtails itself as a productivity app, that's not really ideal. As you can see right there, they see about the most recent six emails in their inbox. And that's not exactly a great experience. William also mentioned that OneNote was able to make a significant change to their hit targets. And our designers, our designers examined whether it made sense for us to make those changes as well. And in some cases, it did. We actually looked at the folder items in the left nav along with the account controls and reduced the height of those by about 20%, was met with pretty much overall positive feedback because users were able to see more of their content on their screen. However, in the message list, our research showed an incredibly wide variety of tastes with no single density winning out overall. Some users liked our big, easily touchable mail items, while others preferred a hyperdense, show me as many emails as you possibly can, I want to see everything type of view. So following some of the UI density that you heard Kevin talk about and Joe talk about, uh, and some of Fluent's adaptive principles, we decided to easily give that to our users. And earlier this month, actually just before build, uh, we released a setting that allowed users to easily switch between three different densities in the mail app, spacious, medium, and compact. And you can see an animation kind of exemplifying the difference in density there. Uh, and this was really met with a lot of positive acclaim. That same situation and scenario that I showed you earlier where a user might only be able to see six and a half emails on their screen in the most dense configuration with that single line view at the bottom, they're actually now able to see 23, which felt a lot better. Users felt like they were, we were meeting them where they were and they felt more productive. And this kind of goes into the core of why the fluent design language is adaptive and empathetic. We want to meet our users where they are. This not only means adapting to a wide variety of display types, as was the goal with density, but also to a wide variety of input methods that have become ubiquitous in today's world. And that brings us to a great example of how Office is helping to improve Fluent. On-object commanding, or on-object on UI that I'm showing here, has been a core part of Outlook for years. I'm sure you're all very familiar with it. Outlook.com uses it. Win32 Outlook uses it, and it was a natural fit for the Mail app and has actually been part of the Mail app since we released with Windows 10 initially. Given how successful this is with our users, it's actually one of the principal ways that we see users triaging email in their message list. 
Microsoft's platform team, platform team is now bringing this to Fluent. And of course, while the mouse, the trackpad, and the cursor remain one of the most popular ways users interact with Windows 10, touch and pen input are a key part of Microsoft's design story. These days, users expect to be able to quickly swipe through their emails using touch and gesture actions have been a key interaction with the, mail, with the Windows 10 mail app from the beginning. And again, seeing how successful this has been, Fluent followed quickly, and in fall of last year, gave developers the ability to incorporate rich and complex swipe controls into their universal Windows apps. This is just a mock-up of, uh, of the swipe controls at the bottom. You might be familiar with them if you've used the XAML controls gallery. Uh, they have great code snippets and examples of how you can incorporate these into your apps. You could also watch Casey and Joey's uh, presentation from yesterday where they gave a few examples as well. And that's kind of the beauty of the Fluent design system. Fluent allows developers to easily adapt their experience and meet users where they are. My previous example with on-object commanding was optimized for mouse users. Swipe is designed for touch. And this is important because you want to be able to meet your users however they're using your apps. Fluent controls work inside something as cutting edge as mixed reality, which you'll hear about more in today's conference, uh, or something as tried and true as a right-click context menu. Everything just works. One thing we repeatedly hear from users is that they want easy access to commonly used formatting commands, like bold, highlight, and bolts. Again, this goes back to what Chris said about meeting users where they are. Office has a great solution for this called the mini toolbar, which displays these commands in a floating menu right next to where the user is working. By providing these commands in context, users can focus on their content and reduce scrolling and mouse travel and other distractions. The mini toolbar, however, is only available in the Win32 versions of the Office apps. Apps like OneNote for Windows 10, for example, only have basic context menus with no floating UI. And as we recently announced, we, a OneNote for Windows 10 is going to be the default OneNote app in Office 2019 and Office 365. And we're no longer updating our Win32 version of OneNote. So it's important that we bring this simplicity and the contextual and speed of the mini toolbar to our Windows 10 app. So we could have just rebuilt the mini toolbar in OneNote for Windows, in OneNote for Windows 10. But instead, we've actually worked with the Fluent team to build this mini toolbar into Windows as a native control for any developer to use. With the new command bar flyout, as it's called, your users will have access to commonly used formatting commands right at their fingertips, just like in Office. The new command bar flyout takes things a step further by combining the mini toolbar with the right-click context menu, as you can see here. And we bring these two commanding surfaces together into a single cohesive experience. The floating UI where the primary commands sit is displayed whenever a user highlights text. And as app developers, you have complete control over what is shown here. Right-clicking or selecting the ellipses at the end of the primary commands list displays a list of secondary commands or the right-click context menu with even more options for users. So you have a lot of flexibility in how you use this control. Best of all, the command bar flyout adapts to your input method, automatically resizing based on whether it was invoked with a mouse and keyboard, pen, or touch. And you can see the different sizes, and it will scale automatically right there. We also have support for acrylic. And as you can see, we have support for light, and dark themes, everything you expect out of a Fluent control, and it, again, adapts to your app and your input type. Designing the command bar flat has been a great partnership, a fantastic partnership between Windows and Office. And we've designed the control to scale from simple text boxes all the way to rich productivity apps. And you can use it with any experience which requires contextual commanding, from editing text and ink to interacting with images, UI elements, and more. You have a lot of flexibility. And for more details, I'd recommend going to Paul's or uh, watching Paul's talk on Fluent from yesterday on demand uh, for even more guidance on when to use the command bar flyout. But we've, we've worked hard to make it you know, as flexible as possible. We've even designed future improvements to the control, like a two-line mode for increased efficiency of space. The control supports everything you would expect, from cascading menus and combo boxes to split buttons and more. It's all about giving you, the developers, the flexibility you need to make your apps as productive as possible. And I'm excited to announce here at Build that OneNote for Windows 10 will be one of the first apps to support the command bar flyout once it's available. It can be easy to want to combine 
Thank you. <laughs> it can be easy to want to cram in all of the uh, your, all of your favorite features into the primary commands space, but you know we found that the more commands you add, the harder it is. In this case, in any, any command surface, the harder it is for users to find the content they're looking for. And so we, we recommend about six to seven primary commands. This has the best uh, combination of uh, amount of options for users as well as um, screen real estate and. The nice thing is you have the sec list of secondary commands as well, so you have a lot of flexibility in what you do. We've done extensive research on the top actions users take in OneNote, whether they're editing text or images or working in tables or whatever. And uh, we've used this to help us inform which commands we show there. Again, it's contextual, so you can change which commands are visible depending on what the user is doing. The image shown here is, a, is not, not, not final. Uh, it's a mock-up, and we're still tweaking the exact list of commands, but it's representative of what you'll see when the control is available. And we're really excited for, to, to, for you to try it for yourselves and, and hear your feedback, and also have you start using it in your own apps. So one of the last things that we did want to touch on uh, is how Fluent is also keeping pace and ensuring Microsoft continues its commitment to creating experiences that are accessible and most efficient to as many of our users as possible. Uh, anyone who's used the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint apps with Windows might be familiar with this feature here. It's called Access Keys. Uh, they've been a staple of Office for years and a great way for our keyboard users to quickly and efficiently navigate our apps. We're excited that Access Keys are now available for all developers, and a number of our apps are leveraging them today. Uh, you can see here the Paint 3D app and the Alarms app making their apps more accessible and more efficient by using Access Keys. Last but certainly not least is Motion. Motion is a critical part of the Fluent design system and it's core to modern user experiences, as I'm sure you all know. Motion helps guide the user, deftly conveying to the user where they came from and where they're going. In OneNote, we use Motion to help users build a mental model of the navigation and help them understand their location within their notebooks. Without Motion, switching from a single or, or zero panes to three is incredibly jarring because it just appears right in front of them and users have no idea what's going on. Uh, and again, this probably isn't too surprising for you, but as soon as we added Motion, the problems went away. Users understood that the navigation panes came in from the left and returned where they came from once they were dismissed. And that helped a lot. Uh, of course, motion, while critical, can actually um, be a little bit distracting or provide, in, increase the perception of sluggishness if it's used incorrectly. Uh, so you always have to be careful and do a lot of research, making sure that you have the right amount of motion, and Fluent helps with a lot of that. Um, in OneNote, we actually found that some of our animations were a bit too bouncy, and so we've tweaked them to make them uh, a little bit smoother, as you can see here, and that's coming soon. Uh, and a piece of the Fluent toolkit that you might all be familiar with is Connected Animations. Uh, and they're a fantastic way to make na navigation dynamic and compelling, seamlessly transitioning between two different views. And they've been used in great effect in things like the Photos app, the Groove app. Uh, they help the user maintain context and continuity between their views. But for Mail and OneNote, like William mentioned, our research showed that the simpler and quicker navigation and animation that we had in the app mostly sufficed. And that was the great thing about the Fluent design system. You can use the Fluent elements that work with your app. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. We'll, of course, be looking at connected animations and leverage them in whatever opportunity we can to make our users' lives better in the future. And it will continue to be available to us. Exactly. It's all about that flexibility. <laughs> this is just the beginning, though. Uh, there, there's, so there's only a few of the productivity enhancements that are on the way to Fluent thanks to the great partnership between Windows and Office. We're thrilled that any developer can now easily enhance the productivity of their apps with increased UI density, on-object commanding and gesture actions, uh, the command bar flyout, access keys, and more. And we're continuing to work together to bring the best of what our teams have to offer to Fluent. If you missed any of the Fluent sessions this week, I highly recommend going to the Build website where you can watch all of the sessions on demand. Uh, there's still a few more sessions left today that you haven't missed yet. But if you did, again, they're all available on demand. Uh, and you can learn more details about how to use these Fluent controls in your own apps. Uh, and so you can help your users start being more productive as well. I want to thank you all for joining us. And we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks.